Greece and the spike in the Greek was sitting in an on the snail of a new aim. Three with me, yes, he had been an empty of all we all. The strokes and the damn nails will miss in the next. The elf must get clear and allow for her as her we fight up. Eridan, also known as the last of the first humans and the last Aslanti. His portfolio included human culture, innovation, and history. His alignment was lawful neutral. His domains included community, glory, knowledge, law, and protection. His sacred colors and animals are undefined, but his favorite weapon was the long sword. Eridan's holy symbol is a winged eye with a jewel above it. Oftentimes this eye is streaming out light. Eridan was the immortal Aslanti who raised the Star Stone from the bottom of the inner sea in the first year A.R., founded the city of Absalom, and became a living god. Eridan was an immortal descendant of the ancient human kingdom of Aslant, which sank below the waters of the Arcadian Ocean in negative 5,293 A.R., when the Star Stone fell from space. The impact created the inner sea and cast the world into a thousand years of darkness. Somehow, Eridan survived. Thus, he is considered the last of the first humans because he was, by several thousand years, the last of the pure-blooded High Aslanti to die. Other Aslanti survivors of the Cataclysm interbred with other humans and, of course, died of old age. He is best known for raising the Star Stone to its current resting place on the Isle of Kortos, at the heart of the city of Absalom. He thereafter ascended into the heavens, becoming the patron deity of the kingdom of Taldor. Before his ascension, he is known to have completed a number of miraculous tasks. The most famous of these is when he traveled to the settlement of Igorian in Cheliax. The town was surrounded by plains of red roses, half of which turned white at Aridan's mere presence. These flowers maintained their coloration for thousands of years thereafter. After his ascension, Aridan worked hard to protect and aid humanity. He guided the brightest and finest of humanity to Absalom, where he encouraged the growth of the city. Usually, he preferred to provide aid from a distance, such as the Siege of Absalom in 166 AR, when the Archmage Nex invaded. Even so, when necessary, Auradin took a very active role in the destruction of humanity's foes. Soon after his ascension, he led a host of mortal heroes and powerful outsiders into the abyss to slay the demon lord, Ibduringian, who had been harassing Aslanti humans since before the Starfall. He also defeated the wizard king Tar Buffon in combat in 896 AR, although the exact reason for this conflict is unknown. Over a period of a few thousand years, Taldor, which is located due east of the Isle of Kortos, spread northwest across the southern reaches of the continent of Avistan, where its frontier land claimed territory now known as Cheliax. When Taldor eventually became decadent and effete, the clerics of Aradin took their religion and their mandate from heaven west to Cheliax. Aradin is only known to have appeared once in recent centuries. He appeared in 4433 AR in the Kelid nation of Sarkoris to fight the avatar of the demon lord Deskari and drive him and his followers into the lake of mists and veils. Aradin was well respected by most humans as he represented their culture, innovation, and history. An important prophecy known as the Starfall Doctrine suggested that he was to manifest in Cheliax in 4606 AR, marking the beginning of a long-awaited Age of Glory. Instead, at the appointed hour, Golarion was racked with three weeks of storms, leaving the eye of Abendigo as a lasting reminder. When the weather broke, the clerics of Aradin found themselves disconnected from their god and all presume Aradin dead. Most of Aradin's followers have become clerics of Aomidae, his greatest servant, 
who is one of the few mortals of Galarian to travel through the Star Stone and gain divinity herself. Those few who stay true to the last Aslanti have been left without divine power, sometimes resorting to mimicking true clerical ability with magic items. They preside over crumbling temples, many of which have been taken over by other religions, most prominently that of Aomade. Eridan's holy text is called the History and Future of Humanity, but obtaining a copy may prove troublesome outside of a few Iomidean temples still placing the books in their library out of sentimental reasons. Priests of Eridan wear elaborate, archaic, multi-layered vestments popular in Taldor when the center of the church was still located there. Tall hats or helmets are common as well, and are said to have been inspired by the fashions of the ancient Asland. When Arodin walked the world disguised, he took one of twelve guises, beggar, thief, fisherman, hunter, shepherd, farmer, soldier, merchant, tailor, craftsman, artist, and scholar. Travelers to West Crown can find these guises carved into the stone along the northern wall of the Canarodin, a long canal in the Perego Spira district of the city. Arasni, now known as the Harlot Queen, formerly known as the Red Crusader or the Herald of Arodin. Her portfolio includes Command of Undeath and Lichdom. Her alignment is neutral evil. Her domains include evil, nobility, and protection, with subdomains of defense and leadership. Her favorite weapon is the rapier. Her symbol is a rapier and lotus. Her sacred animal is the scarab beetle, and her sacred colors are gray and red. The Lich Arasni, also known as the Harlot Queen, is the de facto ruler of the Garundi nation of Geb, as Geb himself has been absent or withdrawn from the day-to-day -day running of the country in recent years. Arasni's history is a different one. Arasni was once a demigod and a herald of the god Arodin. Very little is known of her from this time, although several sources do mention that she was acquainted with the Sun Lord Thalachos, the herald of the goddess Serenre. She served as the patron saint of the Knights of Ozim, a religious military order that fought against the Whispering Tyrant during the Shining Crusade in the 39th century AR. The Knights summoned her in 3818 AR to lead them in battle but she was ultimately humiliated and slain by the tyrant in 3823 AR. In an effort to demoralize his opponents, the Lich threw her broken body back to her knights during the Battle of Three Sorrows. After the end of the crusade in 3827 AR, her body was finally interred by the knights of Ozim in her new citadel in the new nation of Last Wall. Her body did not remain there for long, however, as it was stolen in 3890 AR at the behest of the Ghost King Geb in retaliation for a failed assault on his kingdom by the Knights of Ozim. She was swiftly brought to his nation, where he transformed her into a lich and named her his Harlot Queen. Over a period of years, Geb used his subtle yet powerful influence on the once powerful goddess, until nothing remained of her former personality. He eventually turned her against her former allies, particularly Iomide, her successor as Aradin's herald. Although not nearly as powerful as she once was as a demigod, Arasni is still a potent force in her own right, and continues to keep the scheming and independent-minded undead who help run the country from seizing power for themselves. She has a retune of five former Knights of Ozim, reanimated by Geb as Grave Knights. She rules Geb from the Cinerarium in the center of Mechitar, allowing Geb to focus on more esoteric matters without having to trouble himself with matters of state. 
Arosny is rumored to have a particular weakness. Many of Arosny's internal organs were removed before her reanimation as a lich and placed in special canopic jars known as the Bloodstones of Arosny. Arosny is concerned that these organs could one day be used against her and has done her best over the centuries to track them down and destroy them. What is known for certain is that they are powerful artifacts linked not only to the former divine power of Arosny, but also to that of her patron, Arodin. Hello everyone. I hope you liked this video. It was brought to my attention that perhaps this will be slightly um, outdated or changed in the future regarding Arodin because there is a Paizo release coming out in November of an adventure path that will have a write-up for him. But in case you wanted to use him between now and then, I figured I would give you the information I had on hand. If there is enough change in the information to warrant a part two, I will be more than glad to put that together. If you're following along in your Inner Sea God's Guide, you will know that we have the dead deities coming up next. And that we wanted to do Arodin and Arosni first because they were so influential on the Inner Sea area. Please stay tuned for that. If you want to leave me a comment in particular, be sure to tag me by putting plus sign the in, like, comment, share, and subscribe this video, and as always, have a great day, God bless, and enjoy. This content was made possible by travelers and viewers like you. Thank you.